Colbon. Oh, he steps through the challenge as well, does Liam Colbon. He has Dawn for support. And uh, Alex Brown fancies another run at the ball. So athlete for athlete first is, is like your traditional gym really, uh, but we've got more focused on uh, less machines and more and more free weights. So there's there's uh, 11, 11 racks and, and all the equipment that goes that goes with that. Uh, shower facilities uh, and then uh, kitchen area for, for refreshments and coffee. Yes, yeah. yeah, so we have we have two two areas as well. Half of the gym is inside and half of the gym is outside under cover. So we've also got we're in the final stages of developing the Athlete First campus, which will be uh, predominantly in uh, school holiday times, and also in the summer and spring. Uh, and over there, there's a half a size uh, rugby pitch, uh, and also an outdoor training facility, which again has got uh, a gym area and Astro. Uh, the gym area is under cover also. So Athlete First is a strength and conditioning. Uh, facility uh, in Aldley Edge in Cheshire. Uh, so I started uh, basically uh, from retiring from rugby and I went into some more CPD uh, afternoon sports science degree uh, and I went into basically personal training uh, and doing strength conditioning for young athletes and then uh, off the back of that it's taken me from Hull to, to sort of Cheshire uh, via, via different routes uh, and now until over the last five or six years working from uh, independent places uh, building up like the business and until I've uh, took the plunge to do my own thing. Uh, I was quite lucky really with, with being at Wigan and uh, Dean Bell uh, when he first signed me and he wanted, he encouraged all of us uh, young boys to, to do some extra things and, and, and actually start thinking about what if we didn't make it because it's a very tough school at Wigan as it is everywhere else and you've got to start thinking about those things. So I, I went down the sort of uh, the college route then into into university uh, and the club were brilliant with me uh, they let me fit the training around uh, the education because uh, I was doing it full time uh, and yeah I carried on pursued that it didn't have its, it was with its challenges uh, but that was how I initially started to, to do it and uh, I didn't know I did that as a general a general standpoint and then I didn't know where I wanted to go with it but it gives me a good set for the future. So I, 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 I always had a concept, a conceptual idea of what I wanted to do when I finished and it started off working more towards working strength and conditioning for golfers because uh, I'm a keen golfer myself and I thought there might be a bit of a gap in the market and then all of a sudden you do a bit more research and realise it's not as big a gap as what you thought it was uh, and also I wasn't as prepared as what I thought it was. So uh, I did some, some extra CPD courses and again like the uh, the, one, the fortunate thing about being a professional rugby player is you have some other time as well uh, in the downtime when you're resting and recovering uh, to do some other things uh, if, you, if you so wish. Uh, and I did, did some other courses, did some other things, started a few ideas uh, and then very very soon quick, real, quickly realised that uh, just having uh, actual uh, knowledge uh, versus an actual business is two, is two things and poles apart. So, uh, trying to close that gap through getting work experience with certain individuals and certain people uh, and then also uh, trying to find out some more some business mentors and things to, to help on that sort of the business acumen side of things as opposed to just a conceptual idea trying to make it into, uh, into an actual formula in business that makes money. Uh, yeah, there's, the hindsight's a, a wonderful thing and uh, the, the first thing that I wish I did was I, I, I I was lucky through, through Rugby League because they, they put me on uh, a public speaking course uh, and I was quite shy by nature as a, as a, young, a young man uh, and, and actually doing that and showing us some, some techniques in how to present yourself and how to introduce yourself and how to network 
using them skills at the early on in my career would have been invaluable uh, and then, then realising I said be building upon what I said before, knowledge is one thing but being able to communicate that idea with other people and network and, and building a network is, is something uh, I probably didn't take advantage of. So long story short, if I could go back again, I'd spend more of my time building relationships and, and building how to present myself as opposed to just building uh, knowledge. Um, I think there's lots of uh, there's lots of skills that you develop as a, as a, any uh, professional sports person uh, or even non-professional sports person being in the team environment and the obvious ones are the, the sort of discipline to get to where you want to get to uh, and understanding that it's more of a process as opposed to an instant so you, you're going to have to put a lot of things in behind the scenes to get something that, that you see uh, from the outside uh, and I think the two things go hand in hand in that and also the fact that it's more of a being able to to constantly uh, overcome sort of adversity and sort of challenges uh, and realising the fact that you're going to have to have more defeats uh, in essence just building upon that week on week and, and day to day and hour to hour and the more that you can do that then the, the, the more robust that you become as not only as a, as a sports person in one context but also as a business person in the other. So uh, where I am now is more of a rugby union dominant area so uh, I've, uh, before before COVID and things in normal times, I've gone out to more and, and sort of uh, gone watching some of the, the kids that I coach and in the rugby union setting and things. And, and in terms of the rugby league, I, I've, I've got obviously I've got some good friends that I've made from it uh, that I keep in contact with, like Cookie, you know, Matt Cook from uh, and a few of the other boys as well. Uh, and it's in Sarton, it's in Sargent, and it's been it's been great to keep in contact with them, but also to to sort of like be with them outside of the, the, the pressures of rugby and, and being able to sort of appreciate their, their trials and, 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 and sort of uh, problems so to speak in, in the other way around and then being able to sort of like speak and relate to them on a different sense really which has been which has been great and, and I'd like to do as there is I'd like to do some more some more initiatives in this area and trying to introduce rugby and, and which this game has been so so good to me and my family over the years and uh, and introduce it to more of these other people in rugby union who haven't experienced it uh, and, and then also show them that actually if you don't make it as a rugby union player maybe that rugby league might be the spot for you. So on the 14th and 15th of August uh, I'm lucky to uh, welcome Greg English to do an athlete first camp together so Greg's going to be focusing on uh, rugby league skills, the fundamentals of which I'm going to be looking at uh, strength and conditioning, how to get strong, uh, just body weight only uh, on day one and day two is going to be looking at sort of speed fundamentals. Uh, there's going to be, uh, group one is going to be ages 10 to 13 over a three hour window uh, and the end of the day for each group and then, sorry, and then from 2.30 2 till 5.30 there's going to be the 13 plus group. Uh, at the end of each uh, training day there's going to be a barbecue with some refreshments and things for you. Uh, to have and all the proceeds uh, are going to go to uh, our, our partner which is uh, Rugby League Curse. Uh